Norfolk's council tax is going up by 4.8%. So is that too much or do we need it to protect care for the elderly? Good evening. We'll all be paying more council tax from April. The county councils put an extra £57 a year on a banned D property. Councils in Norwich, South Norfolk and Great Yarmouth have also put their taxes up as well in the last week. But they're still having to make cuts, as Neil Perry reports. The day started with protests and ended with a plan for how Norfolk County Council wants to spend our hard-earned taxpayers' money. But what are the bits you need to know? Well, in total, they're having to find £48 million in savings across their budgets. But where are they coming from? They've been having to make cuts for years. They say mostly it's from their back office. But the most controversial is £5 million in cuts to housing services and charities that help tackle homelessness. Council tax is also going up by 4.8%. That's about £57 a year for a band D property. That's to pay for a £25 million investment into adult social care. The Conservatives in charge at County Hall describe this as a robust budget built on graft. Campaigners, though, say it's a tragedy for the county's most vulnerable. So what will all this mean for you and could the cuts to homeless charities have been avoided? Here to talk about this is the former council leader George Nobbs from Labour and Toby Cook from UKIP. Also here this evening, Martin Schmira from the Green Party and James Wright from the Liberal Democrats. Let's get your reactions first of all. George Nobbs, what was your reaction to the budget overall on Monday? Well, it's not the budget which we had last year. I mean, we produced a three-year budget last year, which every party uh, virtually voted for, including the Conservatives. And I think they would have put us in a much better position. Um, what the Conservatives have done this year is to avoid making the, the, the back office cuts that were planned in that budget, put them forward into future years, hope for the best, basically, but at the same time put the tax up very highly. Uh, and as I say, you know, and rely on, uh, for future years on basically what are accountancy tricks, which you can only do once, which is to capitalise various items and put, move them for a different part of the budget to another part. That, that works once, it doesn't work if, uh, again. Um, and like I say, to trust to luck in many ways. I think they've sure, to say it's robust is ridiculous, it's, it's far from robust. They've chosen to, as I say, to load the cuts to in future years to avoid being unpopular this year, and they choose to, to have a high ta council tax this year because they think they can get away with it because everybody else is doing it. OK, let's ask Toby Cook, what do you think of it? Do you think they can get away with this high council tax? Is, are you, were you happy with well, that well, rise? Uh, no, I, I think my party is probably more than any of the others dead against kind of council tax rising. But the amendments that all the opposition parties put forward were, were defeated. And this would have mitigated some of the worst effects of the, uh, uh, the, 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 this budget. And, and um, I, I think that's largely sort of intransigence, <laughs> I, think, I think a great pity. And it would have given time for the council to try and, as George has sort of implied already, to look for other solutions. Um, uh, because really what they're doing is just kicking the can down the road here. Mm. OK, uh, well, let's, let's ask the Green Party. What do, what do the Greens make of this budget as a whole? Well, I thought it was a little short of social vandalism, really. I mean, to the most vulnerable communities in Norwich, which is where I represent, I think this will come as little more than a blow upon a bruise. This is something that is being handed down by central government. It's something like £161 million pounds has had to be slashed from local government funding for Norfolk County Council. And quite frankly, the saving the efficiency savings have already been made and now it is cutting deep into the bone and into the heart of our communities and it's completely reprehensible in my opinion. Okay, social vandalism, is that a step too far? Uh, well it is a step too far and the, the, the cuts to, to housing support etc that will have deep impact on organisations like the YMCA, St Martin's Housing and the Benjamin Foundation are just too much and that's why the joint amendment between Labour and the Liberal Democrats would have you know, helped uh, mitigate against some of that. Okay, well we did ask the leader of the council, Cliff Jordan, to come on the programme and he declined that offer. Instead, he spoke to Mustard TV News at County Hall and explained some of the challenges he's facing. There's nothing I can do. We must look after those that can't look after themselves. We must do that. We've got to ensure that good rules. You don't want to keep breaking your suspension, getting flat tyres. You don't want 
have dangerous roads. So we've got to do the roads. You've got libraries. You've got all the other facilities, the frontline facilities. We're determined to continue them up at the highest level. So therefore, collectively, we pay. Collectively, well, we pay. So uh, there's nothing we can do. I mean, yes, I think it's opening words. There's nothing I can do. Sort of sums up Cliff's attitude to, to, to running the council. But to say that we've got to look after, then to say in the next breath, we've got to look after the most vulnerable, and then to say, you know, if your suspension is damaged on the road, that's his idea of the most vulnerable in society. Yeah. He, he was asked the question, did he care about homelessness? He said, no, I don't he said, um, because it's a district responsibility. Well, you know, what we were proposing in our amendment, which virtually every party agreed to apart from the Conservatives, was taking 1.2 million of the 5 million cut and restoring that uh, so that we gave a breathing space. Mm -hmm. But they wouldn't even consider that. And isn't it remarkable, there's four parties here, all very, very different, all happen to agree independently on what they wanted done. And yet the Conservatives said, no, it couldn't be done. Cliff Jordan, uh, he mentioned transport and you used to be on that transport committee, didn't you? Can you s understand his, want, his need to prioritise transport and potholes and things like that? Well, there's a separate uh, fund for potholes and the government yeah. had, uh, specifically funded that uh, this year. This year. Uh, everyone acknowledges that the central government have cut the, and are continuing to cut to zero by 2020 the revenue support grant. My problem with Cliff is he's just burying his head in the sand, mm -hmm. as I said. What is he doing about the vision for Norfolk in the future? And, and it doesn't exist. It's to just sort of stick a plaster on and get through the next few months till after May and then we can raise council tax again or something. Uh, and he's been, you know, where at least I am and my party trying to drag him kicking and screaming into the sort of 21st century. But these cuts are happening and he says we just have to pay. Is that ine inevitable that council tax has to go up? Well I think at the moment it does and you know, we are seeing a reduction in, in central government grants. There was a Tory 2015 manifesto pledge, manifesto commitment to not raise um, VAT mm -hmm. income tax on national insurance contributions and central government has to find its money from somewhere so what it's doing is you know, riding roughshod over, mm. over local government and saying local government can pay and, mm. and Cliff's whole attitude about saying well actually that's a district council responsibility we're seeing the central government trickling down to, to counties mm. which in turn then trickles down to, to districts. I, can I come in again? I, uh, James's point uh, there that we all face now the, the, you know where we're going to be relying on two things, council tax and business rates uh, by 2020. And the current system is simply not sustainable unless you're going to have, uh, James is implying that, a uh, huge rise in council tax. And it's going to become academic after a bit. On top of this, the government are sort of clobbering small businesses at the moment, mm -hmm. which have been in the press. And, and we'll talk more about the game. future in, in yeah. a moment. But I wanted to, to talk to hear from those campaigners. We, we did see campaigners outside County Hall before the meeting. And they were trying to stop the cuts to the housing charities that we mentioned. Jonathan Moore is the chairman of disability charity Equal Lives. It's a tragic day. I mean that amendment was very key, key for all the unions that came here today. We were try, trying to secure protection for homeless people, especially homeless people with mental health problems. I mean my great fear and the great fear of the people of Equal Lives is that the suicide rate will go up. That's why and I make no apology for it, I've said, you'll have blood on your hands for this. And they will. He said blood on their hands. Is he going too far, Martin Schmira? Well, I, I think time will tell on that. I think what we do know, though, is that there is going to be anything up to a £3.2 billion black hole or in the red in terms of what councils can provide in terms of uh, social care and I think it's quite remarkable <coughs> that I think we're one of the few countries in Europe where social care is passed down to local government and I think what we've got at the moment fortunately is that the Chancellor is sitting on 10 billion pounds worth of extra tax revenue that he could therefore be spending on a dealing with this massive problem that is facing everyone not just in Norfolk but around Britain. Mm. OK, well, as we've been hearing, the, with those criticisms are a lot uh, for the Conservatives over the £5 million cuts to homeless charities. But the leader of the County Council, Cliff Jordan, says it's the duty of the district councils to pay for that. I understand what they're talking about. I mean, homelessness, for instance, and that's all triggers from that. Well, I didn't change the law. The government changed the law. They also changed the money passed, didn't come to us. And for some extraordinary reason... 
the, whoever run the council then at the time didn't change the money and we kept picking up the bill. It's only when I saw that and questioned why are we still picking up a bill that we have no right to do because we're a tax raising authority, so are the others. And that's their responsibility. Why are we ex and hitting us for something that's nothing to do with us? So Cliff, your, well, there's several bill things. Bill sorry, there's, <laughs> there's several things there. I mean, seven or eight years ago, Cliff claims this happened. The Conservative in charge. He was a member of the Conservative cabinet on Norfolk County Council, so the fault is his. But you know, it's like passing on the other side. You know, it's just it, the, we're not saying we should pay all of it. We d this is something we do with districts mm. and, with, and with charities. And to, and to say, oh, it's nothing to do with us, it's all down to the districts, is absolute nonsense, and he knows it. We, I remember when I became leader, we talked to the districts about, about money. And we, the, they hand over a great deal, of, a considerable amount of money from what was called second homes money to us. Mm. And we left a proportion, which technically was the county councils, because it was going to be spent more efficiently by the districts on things which we believed were part of a, a joint district and county uh, pro, uh, priority, and homelessness is one of those things. Well, let's ask James Wright, because you're on the City Council. Uh, how much of a worry is this for you? Well, I think it's a huge worry, and I, we, we have to see cooperation between county, mm. districts, third sector um, and CCG. You know, public sector can't work in individual silos, and I find Cliff's attitude there over, over the, it being the district's problem, um, I, I find it outrageous. What I will say, uh, taking Norwich in particular, we're seeing a 15.9% reduction in our core spending power between now and, and 2020, You're the fourth worst off district council in the country due to reduction in, in government grants. So it's simply not sustainable to say that districts should, should pick this up. And I think one of the other real concerns is that while district funding is also going down considerably, yesterday James and I, we had to pass 2.3 million pounds worth of savings on Norwich City Council. But actually we're seeing homelessness going up mm. by well over mm. a third every, every the last two or three years. And we've seen that not just in Norwich, but in Kings Lynn and indeed across Norfolk. And then simply to, for Cliff Jordan to say that it's simply now the responsibility of whether it's Kings Lynn Borough Council or Norwich City Council is a grave dereliction well, of duty. Maybe, maybe Toby Cookie, what you're, to what you're the, the problem with, the, with, with this is that you're actually storing up problems for the future. You're going to have a bigger bill. In but he would say, I've put the council tax up, I've, do, I've done all I can do. Well, well he, he has. He has <laughs> but I, I, I think we, we all, you know, the Liberal and, and, and La Labour amendment, which we, we supported, was going to mitigate uh, a, 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 a lot of that. And by um, uh, what's going to happen, you know, you've got six months down the road, you're going to have, you know, people being forced into the NHS and, uh, you know, this resilient in pe keeping people in their homes and yes, that kind of thing. It, it, it's going to be more and more difficult. It's sort of passing the buck without mm. actually hitting okay. the problem. Well, look, we'll look to the mm. future in a mm. moment. Um, do stay with us. After the break, I'll be putting your thoughts to the panel and finding out what they would have done differently if they'd been in charge at County Hall. Do stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back. Tonight we're looking at how councils spend your money after Norfolk voted to increase council tax by 4.8%. They say it means they can put an additional £25 million into supporting adult social care and children's services. But some have labelled it social vandalism. So how should councils balance the books when they're under increasing financial pressure? Well, here to talk about this is the Labour Group leader and former council leader, George Nobbs and from UKIP, Toby Cook. Also with us this evening from the Green Party, Martin Schmierer and Lib Dem, James Wright. But one of the things the Conservatives have been criticised for in this budget is not protecting the most vulnerable people in Norfolk. But leader Cliff Jordan says the opposition councillors are just saying that to make a political point. If I was in their shoes, I would say that, wouldn't I? Because it's a political point. But the, the actual factual point is, if you look at the figures, it does do that. It does look after people. How? Because there's enough money in that weren't there. We've put 25 million quid. It's real money. You heard George trying to rubbish it. The facts came out. It is real money. It's enhancement money. As you mentioned, George, there, one of his easy accusations was that it was wishful thinking, this budget. Uh, what do you say to that? Well, he has the one that got, well, all levels in wishful thinking because last year his budget, we were promised that was really good, firm budget. Within four months, it was 23 million overspent. That's not good. 
with Jordan speaking to Lauren here. He's accusing you of having O levels in wishful thinking. Is that fair? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> Cliff's idea of the, of the the facts and mine are very different. Um, we left uh, Cliff with a budget which would provide a, a gap of 8.8 .8 million this year and his surplus of 22 million uh, next year. Um, there was a budget he voted for, a budget which was prepared by the same officers that prepared this one. What's happened is that there was no no black hole, no gap after four months. After four months, Cliff and his f friends had done nothing. They just sat back this year and let things slide, and they've done nothing about making the savings which were in this budget. They've put them off to future years, avoiding the pain, passing it along, and uh, you know, they are quite incapable of actually getting a grip of what's happening at the council. Uh, but C Cliff is the last person I'll take advice on how to run a budget. When we took over jointly f three years ago, nearly four years ago now, the gap that they left us was £189 89. million. Pounds. That we were reducing to £8.8 .8 million pounds for the year that's now coming. They are now going back to that. They're now going in the opposite direction yet again. Our budget would have produced a surplus over the next three years, including last year, that three-year budget, of £1.8 million at the end of a three-year cycle. Theirs produces a £35 million deficit at the end of three years. That's the difference. Okay, well, so what would you do differently, Toby Cook? If well, I, I, think, I think it's perfectly obvious to e everyone now uh, that we can't go on as we are. And um, what I've been trying to do uh, is get them to revisit the unitary um, situation, which would mean uh, the end of the county council. There's and no course appetite of for it, surely. Well, I, We've I, talked about I, it so many times. I, I know that they, we will come back with that all the time. I think now the situation is so bad that it's the only possible solution. And more dynamic authorities, of which uh, they're all conservative control, like Dorset and Buckinghamshire and even neighbouring Lincolnshire now, are coming on board. This is the only way forward because the savings are huge. And, uh, the, the but the Dorset scheme is falling apart, Toby. Three, no. three parts of three, three I, cars I, have come out of it already. And, and Oxford when, City Council are certainly not happy with it. When you try it. and break the vested interests and the status quo, obviously there are a huge number of people who are very keen to keep that status quo. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, the way, in my view, what's got to happen is we've got to put a plan to the electorate. Right. And they may want to keep the status quo, but they should also be aware that I if they want to keep the status quo, you've got a new meaning to council tax. All right. Well, what would you do differently <laughs> if you were writing this budget? Well, if we were going to talk about a new meaning for, for council tax, that's something that the Green Party has long advocated, actually. We're talking about a land value tax, which is a far more progressive form of taxation than a council tax. Which How is, is it quite different? Well, it basically taxes the, the value of the land and the wealth there rather than basically the property. So, for example, a flat owner is paying quite a lot of council tax at the moment even though the value of their land if they're renting for example is very very limited and or it's not uh, non-existent uh, whereas if someone was actually owning a, a piece of land that would be worth quite a lot of money and they're not developing it that should be therefore taxed at an appropriate level so that's one thing that we would like to do the other thing that the Greens have put forward is a radical idea to tackle air pollution it's killing five percent of our citizens prematurely in Norwich for example and a small amount of investment to improve the buses for example and to phase out diesel vehicles would be very beneficial to public health and ultimately the duty of every government and every local authority is to protect its citizens and by doing that we should be obliging. All right what will the Lib Dems do differently? Well if we're talking about sort of structural changes in terms of the way we we fund local government and we it's very clear that we're going down a route of tax collected locally both from individuals and businesses but actually it's not sustainable to go continue with the, the business rates as they are and with council tax as it is. We have a, a long-standing policy of a local income tax and I think that that is something that, that possibly is a, a policy whose time has now come and but there also needs to be some reform of how businesses are taxed uh, okay. locally as well. Well as but always I, you've been getting, I, I, I'll, I'll come back to you in a moment if I may, as yeah. always you've been getting in touch on, on social media. Frankie Richer says it's okay as long as Mr Jordan and his council vote to freeze their expenses or even cut them by 4.8% in line with the increase that they're asking the citizens that voted them into power. Just ex what happens about councillors' expenses? Do they go up in line with inflation or, or not? I don't think so. No, I think it's about 1%. Uh, I mean, to be, to be fair, actually, 
Norfolk County Council has not increased allowances mm. for councillors, I think, virtually since the time I got elected 12 mm. years ago. I think it's 1%. Um, think. But some district councils, conservative run district councils, mm. have increased their allowances massively in this last year. All right, something mm. to look at. Well, Brian Priest says, stop wasting money digging up every other road in the county. I have to put it to you, you used to be on the, de on the transport committee. <laughs> Are well, we spending I, I, too I, I, much I, I, money I, on the roads? I, I, I think the, you know, the, the actual maintaining the county and indeed every authority is roads is now way beyond any form of council thing. It's going to take a huge national investment to get our roads but There's a lot of changes scratch. and some people think they're unnecessary. I, no, I, I don't agree with that. I think infrastructure is absolutely critical. And if I can come back on James, it's very easy to say, oh, we think of some new tax. That's the way, you know, tax everyone else. The other solutions that you don't need to raise tax. Because the amount of money you're going to require with demographics going mm -hmm. against us, costs increasing, such as national living wage and all this thing, you know, tax is going to have to be increased dramatically. And people have had enough of being taxed. Uh, OK. You know, well, Emma Jones got in all. touch as well. Emma Jones, she agrees. She says, everything's going up. How do they expect people to pay more when right. wages are rubbish? This country's a joke. And I know the Greens were in favour of increased they taxes, but it's, but it's a problem for people, isn't it? It, it is, and, and I think it just shows you how broken the whole council tax system is at the moment. Uh, the, 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 the question is, where are we going to find that sort of money from? And the Greens have come up with some, some interesting ideas on, on that, one of which is to limit the amount of infrastructure on roads, for example. So the nor Northern <laughs> Distributor Route, for example, that's an unnecessary spend of money when we are actually neglecting. No, the, <laughs> you know, well, I believe that it is You've a complete waste of money. And when you're not investing when you're not, not investing See, we're in getting railways, so well up to now. and when you're not <laughs> in investing in in the kind of infrastructure that is sustainable and environmentally that, that, friendly, that then that's the thing. All roads are useless. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not as, saying as that all roads are no, useless. I mean, your your party would get against the NDR. That's going to help yeah. uh, dramatically yeah. on a uh, you know, really really nesting congestion. One at a time, gentlemen. The, the real issue is this: that when I when I was a young man looking at local government, the government paid two thirds of the cost of all local government. Is going to end up in a couple of years' time paying nothing. Exactly. whatsoever. Yeah. That's basically the problem. Yeah. The things we have to deal with, roads and so on, people think are national problems. Education is a national problem. Social care is a national problem. We shouldn't, we shouldn't put on one council yeah. or another so that you have to take pot luck. I mean, some places like Great Yarmouth are not going not to have a big rate basis to raise money from. Other places like Oxford or, mm. or, 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 or Cambridge will be able to make a lot of money. Brighton will make a lot of money. Yeah, it is it is ridiculous to make a lottery. So if you have the misfortune to be born in a place or live in a place where the property values aren't high, you are going to have no services at all. It is scandalous. OK, we've less than a minute left. If you win the elections in May and you get back into control, what would you do? Well, we would. <laughs> we would. We well, would we I'd make you draw. <laughs> would you work together again? Uh, well, look, all the parties would work together are here today, and the Conservatives are not here today. I think that tells you something. I think you, we've shown that we can get on with each other. And so I hope that if we don't have a majority in our own right, we will be able to work with other parties. All right. Uh, it's, it's, it's obviously going to be a really interesting time and we'll talk to you all again in the run-up to those local council elections um, in May. But that is all we've got time for this evening. Thank you to my guests for taking part and to you if you got in touch this week on Facebook or Twitter. Good night. <laughs>